has been a license to print money since time immemorial. And now that machine is starting to malfunction somewhat and nobody really understands how it works right. anymore. The original intention was help people find stuff. And you're saying it's bad if people find stuff. Immediately. Right, yeah. okay, great. They need to suffer a little bit. Okay. And that attention is how Google <laughs> makes money. Google is making search intentionally worse, right? At least that's, that's what we think. Search is intentionally worse because yeah. Google. I mean, objectively, you've used Google. You know, right? It's objectively worse. But why is it objectively worse? Is it large language models? This is Wendell, by the way, from Level 1 Techs. We've it's done a lot of videos. Uh, we were here at a completely unrelated event in, uh, in Taiwan for Computex. Yep. And the topic came up of you know, everyone's seen the Google AI search stuff online. And uh, you sent me the one about <laughs> about uh, using Elmer's glue to make pizza. Yeah. So that was great. Yeah. If you so, look at like if like forget about AI for a second and think about AI as Google was thinking about AI in like 2015, 2016, 2017. And so if you're Google, you want more people to spend more time on Google. If you search for something and it immediately returns the result, mm -hmm. that's going to be a problem because you leave the site. Right. And you're, you're the market leader with such an advantage. You're, well, what if we tweak it? We'll make it a little worse. So just to clarify, the objective of the product is to help people find things. Original. Let's, let's, Originally. No, let's, yeah. Yeah. Don't go down the rabbit hole yet. <laughs> Stay outside the rabbit hole. <laughs> I saw it happening. Uh, <laughs> Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly's Aeronaut and Hydronaut Thermal Pastes. Aeronaut is Thermal Grizzly's entry-level thermal solution, marketed as resistant to curing and for long-term endurance. Hydronaut is Thermal Grizzly's next step up, targeted for overclocking and higher performance applications. We've used Hydronaut on a lot of our systems internally over the years. You can learn more at the link in the description below. The original intention was help people find stuff, and you're saying it's bad if people find stuff immediately right yeah okay great they need to suffer a little bit okay and that attention is how google <laughs> makes money because you're seeing ads you're seeing things your eyeballs are on stuff and that's a billable event for google mm -hmm. so <laughs> i mean is is it just a is it a hubris thing is it a lack of competition you know like why why well, can you I, I can't think of many industries where you can deliberately by our definition, make your product worse. Oh no, I think it happens all the time. Okay. I think that in <laughs> in every product you can imagine, as as much as companies can, they will make the product worse, hoping that people won't realize. Shrinkflation, uh -huh, uh, yeah. your dishwasher breaks down because otherwise if it lives forever, you're not gonna buy another dishwasher. Yeah. <laughs> you know, appliances, like literally everything. And so I think if 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 for if you're a Google shareholder, Google can go to the shareholders and say, we're gonna increase time on site by providing summaries of data. I think it's into the AI thing a little bit, but, um, and so you never really leave Google. Or if your search result is on like the end of page one or page two, uh -huh. then you get more ad revenue. Right. That, that came out in the lawsuit, I think. There was a, some discovery and some documents, and Google noticed that if people didn't really seem to mind too much if they made it to page two, and then they got the ad exposure of page one and page two, which increased the likelihood they might click something. This whole, the whole thing seems crazy to me, because um, uh, for a lot of reasons. I don't know which one to start with. I think the Reddit partnership is very interesting. Yeah. The idea of um, this, we'll, we'll partner with Reddit to harvest their data to build our model and provide answers. And so you, you end up in this like infinite loop <laughs> of making things here, <laughs> you know, because it's like the source is a comment with three upvotes, like you said, from 11 years ago. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and it turned into a meme. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, Reddit's like 50% jokes anyway. Yeah. Google's attempt at, you know, I saw a comment from one of our viewers that I thought was really telling of the times where uh, a guest in the video used a technical phrase and the commenter wrote, that's interesting, I'll LLM it as a <laughs> verb, right? <laughs> like, Explain this to me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, which is interesting because traditionally that verb would have been I'll Google it. Yeah. And so I mean what is yeah what does that mean, you know, for Google? Well so if you're if you're Google and before large language models came along and you've made the search a little bit worse, and now large language models come along and they are far from perfect, but they're crappier in different ways. But they're better in some ways because the large language model can tell you exactly what you need to know and you, you don't leave the site, you don't do anything. 
So for AI or for Google, AI solves a lot of problems mm. in that, you know, if they scrape a news headline from somewhere and they rewrite it, all of your argument for saying, oh, they've literally stolen the content and reposted the content, they didn't have permission to do that. Even though there's a link there that leads you there, it sort of turns the idea of what, it, like a search engine is supposed to do that. It's supposed to give you a title and it may be a short summary and then link you there. Right. But if you use AI to rewrite it, at least under current copyright law, basically that's okay. Yeah, and so you and I were just talking about this really briefly, but what's interesting, I mean, that is kind of slippery slope ter yeah. territory too, because um, rewriting a headline and then producing your own paraphrased version of that story is literally just news. Yeah. You know, that's one one person might find the story, but then every outlet everywhere has it. Yeah, or and some version of it. Some version of it. And, paywall, you know, not paywall. Everyone has their own flavor, you know, and, and so, and that's fine. But Google using that kind of defense to me, I don't know, something about it feels a little different. Yeah, well, I don't think that they were able to execute on their plan really coherently because of like the pizza glue thing. <laughs> and I think, I think part of it is because they allowed this situation to fester. If you look at like, I think Forbes is a really egregious example of a site that was using their clout basically for SEO spam. Mm -hmm. And then when AI entered the scene, they were using AI to generate content. And so this is an adversarial use of AI against Google. And they're aware of it, they know. But the algorithm and the algorithm changes because in the beginning they used the MapReduce algorithm and the MapReduce algorithm is what built Google's fortune. Mm -hmm. And I think that's interesting because Google builds another algorithm they haven't really benefited from financially, which we'll talk about in a second. It has to do with AI. But they, don't, they didn't really use MapReduce anymore and the algorithm has changed and we can, you know, the SEO people, like it's a black art. Uh -huh. But if we look at like if the efficacy of how Google has done with Forbes as an example, uh, Google doesn't seem to care. And so all of the blog spam of Forbes goes ahead of like the legit blog where somebody is talking about needlepoint or somebody is uh -huh. talking about you know whatever it happens to be and it's community driven. And so I think somebody inside Google looked at this and they realized it and they said we need a database of content that has been ruthlessly maintained for a decade. And Reddit users don't tolerate nonsense. They do like a good meme, but they don't tolerate nonsense. And so I think ingesting Reddit is an emergency. If they can recognize the nonsense, anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 there's quite a bit of nonsense. But normally, there are a lot of voices on Reddit that are loud, but also wrong. Yes. And so all of that is going to come through in your data set, as well as the trolls. Yeah. But I think that Google didn't really have a choice. I think they had to go with that because they've destroyed their ability to tell what is good content from blog spam content from other content because. Like they just, it doesn't work the way that it used to in MapReduce where it was like, let's look at all the backlinks. Oh, this site right. has a million backlinks, therefore it's really valuable. So is, is this, you know how in a, in a company's history, take a company that's like gone out of business or merged or whatever, uh, it, it, there's, there are points in the history you can point to and say, this was the, <laughs> the turning the point. event that turned it, yeah. yeah. So I mean like acquisitions, right? Like. Uh, where or replacing the engineer CEO with an accounting CEO, <laughs> stuff like that. Is this a turning point for Google? I like in, in ten years, are we going to look at this when, <laughs> when uh, <laughs> I don't know what, what takes over? DuckDuckGo is number one. <laughs> Everyone's like, that was it. That was when they lost everything. I, we, the, it seems like all of the companies working on transformers and convolutional neural networks and everything haven't really figured out a good solution to the hallucination problem. And they haven't really figured out good solutions for ABC XYZ. Mm. But Google, like fundamentally, like 2017, everything that we're doing today is based on Googler's paper. About eight engineers, if I remember correctly, came up with the paper, attention is all you need. Uh -huh. And that's what has led to the proliferation of everything. And it, you know, it took a little while, but also from 2017 to now is uh, the blink of an eye and how you normally go from academic paper to whatever. Right. And they did the academic paper in the beginning with MapReduce and even publishing the, the academic paper on that, their competition couldn't make heads or tails mm. of it and use it effectively. Okay. And so that seems to be what's happening with Google, just like Google Plus. I think Google Plus was a portent of the internal disorganization and strife. It's like, we need to turn the entire company on Google Plus because that's going to be the new attention economy. Yeah. Uh, that was wrong. Yeah. And so. This is kind of like, okay, now the large language models are gonna do it. But it's gotta be wild if you're inside Google and you're looking at this and it's like, we came up with a paper 
And OpenAI is getting all of the credit and all of the press time and all of the well, attention. Well, and Tensor, I mean, isn't that Tensor Google? Cores and, yeah. Weren't they before NVIDIA or am I yeah, wrong on that? No, okay. yeah, just forever before NVIDIA. Yeah. Okay. And you look at this and it's like, how did Google not parlay their TensorFlow stuff into the NVIDIA trillion dollar juggernaut? Like, it makes no sense if you're inside Google and looking at this. I mean, so what is it? Is it, is it just like big company fumbles ball type of thing? <laughs> you know, because you see that a lot. Um, I don't know, we've got a banner behind me that's come into mind for the Skylake <laughs> era. Uh, but, you know, you see that a lot where a company gets way ahead and if it doesn't have the right mindset, it kind of rests or just, uh, like, I don't know, is Google in that state, you think? Is it a technological deficiency? Is it a... It's probably more political and technological okay. and engineering. And corporate, probably also corporate political or world political? <laughs> probably corporate political. Okay. And so there's a lot of infighting in Google because you have this cash cow that is ads and search ads. And it just is, has been a license to print money since time immemorial. And now that machine is starting to malfunction somewhat and nobody really understands how it works right. anymore. Well, it's like, yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> You've got the, the one guy who knows how to maintain the printing press, yeah. you know, <laughs> it's like. And he really <laughs> wants to retire. Just yeah. as soon as his options vest, he's out. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, well, I mean, that's not great then because there's not a lot of ways to fix that machine. But the paradox is that it sure seems like a lot of the leading edge innovation still is happening at Google. Mm. See also attention is all you need, but they're not able to capitalize on it, which is just <laughs> wild because they, you know, they did the academic paper, they did MapReduce, they capitalized on it. And even with their competition, knowing what was going on, it didn't matter. Yeah. And so now it's sort of the opposite situation where it's just like, guys, you okay? Well, and it still seems like they have basically no competition in traditional search, realistically. You know? Yeah. And so, to me, it feels like the competition is stuff like chat GPT. Yeah. Uh, I mean, as an example, actually, this is, I don't know, I'm sure you know, everyone, everyone in the audience, uh, I'm going to fit in with this now, but always kind of has that counterpoint where when you were saying, well, a lot of Google's research has shown a lot of people don't mind going to page two or end of page one. And I'm sure there's already comments about like, yeah. if it's not result three, then I leave. And, <laughs> where and are you I, gonna go? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and I kind of get that where there was a, um, I was researching a, a pr somewhat rare testing machine. I really wasn't having luck with Google and I eventually did go to chat GPT and a lot of it was bullshit, but it did give me a couple of useful answers. Um, the, the hotness in, in my office is using chat GPT to refine the keywords for Google search, to oh, search God. the really long tail that spammers haven't bothered to approach. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like in your case, it would be like looking for obscure components of that machine that blog spammers aren't spamming yet. Right. And then yeah. search for those and then Google's still affecting, uh, effective at finding those because they haven't solved their spam problem. That's wild to me. Yeah. Like using, using an LLM <laughs> to rewrite, because like Google is supposed to function on human language. You would right? think, but, um, but yet. Yeah. The other thing is a, it's a little bit of an economic problem for Google because if they've tuned their algorithm to the nth degree so that the cost per search is this infinitesimal number, uh -huh. then it's all profit. But if you play with the numbers of that and you got to load this big honking, you know, FP32 LLM or, or you know some type of AI model, and all of a sudden your search costs a dollar, that's, that's going to turn that model upside down. And so there's mm. probably the finance people inside Google freaking out about that as well. And so it ends up being this deadlock where they just can't do anything. Right. That's interesting. I hadn't really thought about that. The uh, the fact that a traditional search theoretically should be pretty cheap to conduct. Yeah. But if you start processing all of them, that's actually very expensive. That was so. the wild thing about MapReduce is you're going to take this in, in, this impossibly large data set, you know, in what was the late 90s, and map it and reduce it, hence the name, into something that a modest machine could search. And then so you just have hundreds of machines that can search this database. So is this, is it, is the root of this evil, I mean, actually, let's do it this way. Is the root of this problem evil or incompetence or panic, you know, like? It's, if you've got the money printing machine, uh -huh. you're really afraid to make bold moves. But the problem is other companies are gonna make bold moves right. for you. Yeah. And so it's like, can you spin up a parallel product and will the parallel product work really well? Well, we mm -hmm. see with Google Plus, they, they will dump a bunch of money into the parallel product, but the parallel product doesn't solve the problem or creates other problems or is just a 
we want you to use the product this way, but there's not really, they don't see what the value it is for the It almost feels user. like they'd be better off having like a different URL for this LLM yeah. experiment. Yeah. So then it's like, they can even put it like in the side of google.com, like, did this search suck? Try our other thing, you know? Yeah, <laughs> like, that, that maybe is Gemini. Remember mm. uh, the, the pre-Gemini, Gemini, which was Duo, they, before the large language model thing took off, they demoed this thing that seemed fantastical where it was, you know, a, 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 some type of an AI model uh, helping somebody make a hair appointment or something. Uh -huh. And you watch that demo and it was like, there's, there's no way this is real, this has got to be faked. And then later you found out, oh yeah, it totally was faked. Uh -huh. But now in 2024, you look at the large language models and what it's capable of and Whisper AI for voice recognition and text-to-speech and ChatGPT 4.0 and it's like, holy crap, that is actually, that's close to reality now. And so Google demoed it but apparently couldn't figure it out, so they had to fake it. But now we have, but again, all of this is based on the original academic paper from Google, like the original, yeah. not MapReduce, but the the attention is all you need paper. Oh, it's, and it's it's just kind of wild because clearly somebody inside Google has figured this out, but they haven't been able to turn it into something that will make them money. How is this, this seems like it's this the problem is, so like the current deploy uh, some form of uh, AI to Google search, I feel like that has to spread to YouTube at some point, almost like a, yeah. you know, it's it's like some kind of contagion because because um, YouTube also, as I'm sure you know, you know, you hit the front page or you load on your phone, and they surface a lot more smaller channels these days, which is good if they're legitimate channels. I think because it, it keeps the platform alive. The bad part is. Uh, you get a ton of just AI spam, especially in things like shorts, yeah. where it's like not only is the whole script written extremely poorly to the point that it probably was an LLM, you know, it's, it's AI voice, uh, sometimes the imagery is, and so they're gonna have the same problem of, of AI bloat trash that they have from websites. The most amazing example that I can think of is actually from Krista. She does gardening videos mm -hmm. and and I didn't believe her, but I went to search for gardening video stuff and pretty much anything that you search for relating to like, is it okay to plant this? Does this go here? How does this work? Mm -hmm. uh, all of the legit creators in that space have been drowned out by AI generated swill. That's sad. And it is just like thousands of videos that are, and you, you watch it and it takes a couple of minutes to realize, wait a minute, this is garbage because they're really creative. Mm -hmm. But that also tells me that Google is asleep at the helm dealing with that kind of stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't know how they, like, do they debut the LLM on YouTube, you know? Like, it just starts Is this ripping spam? the transcript and then surface the transcript as a... Yeah. yeah. There, was a there was someone that uh, had built a text search engine of YouTube transcripts, and that was really effective, but mm -hmm. I think Google shut them down. So what, uh, I guess, I've got two, two topics in mind for the sort of last few minutes of this, but mm -hmm. one of them, um, we were talking about rap genius previously and the, the lyrics yeah. case. So uh, if you're not familiar, the, I, I never studied this, I'm not an expert on it, but my recollection is that Genius, the website that produces, that publishes lyrics uh, painstakingly, they went through and planted uh, errors intentionally. The recording industry doesn't provide lyrics for songs, right. but you have to license the lyrics from songs from them, which rap genius did. And Google did as well. Mm. But Rap Genius went to the work of actually transcribing the lyrics. But how do they, like, that's not technically their copyright. Right. How do they protect it? And they introduced errors. And the errors that they introduced were also picked up by Google. And so Google said, no, we didn't steal your lyrics. We licensed them too, which was true. And we created our own. That was false. That had to go to court. And Google lost the part of the court case where they said, we didn't steal this. But the judge said effectively that Google's not liable for damages because they are licensed to use the lyrics. Which is insane to me because... The lyrics weren't the lyrics. Yeah, yeah. And, and because, and the reason we're talking about this, uh, I'm sure most of the audience is familiar, but you search lyrics for a song, at least, I don't know, they still do this, but you'll get like Google will just, do you want to expand this, you know, without ever leaving the site? Yeah. And... Uh, Gotta keep you on site, you might click those ads. Yeah. and. I mean, it's a whole separate discussion, but I've noticed a lot of lyrics are just actually completely wrong. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so that's why sites like Genius, for example, provide value because it's normally got some level of community curation. So if Google can step in and just kind of uh, harvest, you know, without repercussions, that seems really not good. 
Yeah, well, <laughs> it's crazy too because there is legal precedent for that in the in telephone directories and the generation of maps. It was a perfectly valid strategy to maintain some some type of copyright control because you can't really copyright a telephone directory or a map. But if you introduce things to the map that are you know part of your creativity, mm. and someone stealing your map doesn't know which things are real and which things you added then they can get caught red-handed, as Google was caught. But nothing bad happened to Google, whereas these cases dating back to the 1800s for that type of theft clearly err on the side of you know, whoever created the map in the first place. It's kind of wild. So if you created a map that had a, a new destination on it called Copyright Town USA. <laughs> yeah, which doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, and Copyright Town USA appears on someone else's map. Like if Google Maps had it, uh -huh. then theoretically, I should that's a tort. I should be in, entitled to some uh, compensation there because of uh, my copyrights have been violated. Right. Even though if it was a purely accurate map, I wouldn't be entitled to squat. Sure, yeah, because it's just factual at that point. So it's yeah. like you can't copyright um, s certain statistics. It, like for yeah. the For the... Pedantic people in the audience, there is a little bit to be said about the creative arrangement of like the colors and the particular sure. blue you pick for the river and blah, blah, blah. But by and large, it's not that type of content. Sure. So where is this going? I mean, on the Google side of things, not on the 1800s maps. The, th <laughs> the thing that I like a lot about where we are with large language models is that we are able to run them locally or quasi-locally. Mm. So I think the, the super hot, like the Google of the future, I think is going to be something that uses like web GPU or something that really leverages a lot of your local compute. And so the fidelity of your search engine results really depend on how much local compute you put into the mm. search results. That's interesting. Maybe something community or quasi community generated. It's the only way that you're gonna be able to go against Google's infrastructure. So if, but if this new direction for Google, and we've already seen this, you may have linked me to one of these. If it starts killing especially smaller sites that put in a lot of the legwork for real information. Um, you know, if, it's, if it starts putting them out of business and you ultimately end up with that is being replaced by information that's harvested, you're going to naturally cut down on future looking information. Yep. So future results say in five to 10 years, I would think should get a lot less accurate yeah. or, or they're gonna have to like generate them or yeah. you're going to see massive consolidation mm. where you know the top 100 sites become like the top 10 or 15. i mean that's not good either because yeah. then you're just extracting ad revenue and stuffing it with seo yeah and i think also user user sites we may actually see the advent of paid user forms where you pay five dollars a month to be on a user form to keep the ai out oh, and have real people that are <laughs> this is what i found that works really well for this Link directories will probably go back to a thing. I mean, Google. Or, I think, yeah, I was gonna say it's like starting over. In the, yeah, it's like just 90s. like the internet in the beginning. <laughs> yeah. But uh, if Google is paying this much money for user-generated content, and they're they're the ones plugged into the infrastructure, they should know the wheat from the chaff. Uh -huh. And if they are relying on Reddit to do that, that's wild. <laughs> that's really wild. Uh, generally speaking, are you uh, extremely optimistic? Optimistic or slightly optimistic. <laughs> For what? For Google's future. <laughs> <laughs> Those are your three options. Th things are looking kind of dicey, so no, no, the, no, the, lowest, not, uh... the lowest optimistic. <laughs> but uh, th they, their earnings, like their earnings actually were really good and it might be a little bit of a delayed reaction because they've laid off a lot of people and they're doing mm. reorganization and restructuring. And line goes up. Yeah, line, line has to go off. up. But uh, I think that they've, they've got enough smart people that they could do something really amazing and surprise us all. But uh, the speed at which they're moving, like move fast and break things, encouraging people to eat glue, <laughs> not a good look. Google's big enough to get bound up on all the small details. Yeah. And then you can't, you're just paralyzed. Yep. So. See also Google Plus. <laughs> yeah, which is gone. All must yeah. be shared to win the war. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I think we will definitely have more to, I don't know, maybe this becomes a series like, I, I think, or is is the one I do with Gordon? I won't I won't name it here, but <laughs> we can have like the is Google screwed? You know, I I do like that like the fact that you can run so much powerful AI completely locally and offline. That's going to factor into our future for search and everything else. Mm. But I don't know exactly how that's going to take shape. Yeah, I just I think the biggest concern I have is the one about 
data integrity and accuracy yeah. as the sources of data get killed by this. <laughs> yeah. like, that's the really interesting. Yeah, it'll be interesting if the solution for the hallucination in the large language models is being able to bolt on where the large language model saw the information mm -hmm. so that you can click on it and it's like, this was synthesized based on stuff that I read. And it's like, mm, let's be a little skeptical of that versus I read this on Reddit and it's like, well, obviously this is wrong. <laughs> right. Yes. Uh, well, that's, I think that's your dose of optimism for today on Google as a platform. Um, <laughs> Engage below to let us know how Google has let you down over the last five or 10 years. Or if you're AI, please, please just don't. <laughs> I, I, I published a video and I spent the first, uh, I don't know, like five minutes banning bots. So yeah, yeah. It's the future. It's amazing, but th that engagement number goes up. It so does. that's why those are there. It's like, yeah. well, if we get rid of those, then our numbers that we show shareholders on engagement on this platform go down. Are gonna not not great. Yeah. And so we just invert the axis and present it a different way. I've got a brilliant plan for getting people to be more engaged on the platform. We're gonna make the comments really small and shove them over to the side. <laughs> and then they'll engage more yeah. somehow. Check out level one text for more of this flavor of uh Horror. <laughs> Thank you. Lovecrafty and horror. <laughs> yeah. And subscribe as always. We'll see you all in the next one.